Hey, TRB fans, this episode is brought to you by Star Wars Card Trader by Topps Digital Collectibles app. Collect and trade digital collectibles, including exclusive Mandalorian episodic content. Download the app and relive every moment from the new Disney Plus series, as well as the entire Star Wars saga, including upcoming Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, on your quest to collect your favorite heroes, villains, weapons, spacecraft, and more. The app recently relaunched with a new user experience, new features like Workbench, which is a collectible trade-in function, revamped trading flow, newly added trade lists, wish lists, and a set completion tracker, which were all big asks of the community. To celebrate the relaunch, Card Trader released a much-anticipated brand new Kylo Ren-inspired set, aptly titled, I'll Show You the Dark Side, which includes amazing types of never-before-seen collectibles. Star Wars Card Trader by Topps is available worldwide for free download and can be found in both the iTunes App Store or Google Play Store. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. The base is open as you baste your turkeys. Welcome to the Resistance Broadcast. I'm John. Thanks so much for joining us on this wonderful holiday. Uh, whether you're on your way to family's house or you already ate and you're just uh, taking it easy, uh, we're glad you joined us because we have a very special guest with us today. Uh, as always, James and Lacey are with me, but joining us for the third time as our first third time guest, we have to get him like a jacket <laughs> like Steve Martin got on SNL. ABC News is Clayton Sandell. How are you, Clayton? Woo! Oh, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I, I need that shirt. It's like the Five Timers Club on SNL. That's exactly exactly <laughs> right. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. No. H- happy to be back. Happy to. Uh, thank you for for asking me. But I I I, I kind of feel like I, I've now earned the right to go on a little bit of a rant here. Can I just start with a, a tiny rant? Is that all right? <laughs> rant yeah. away. Yeah. All right. Love you it. got you guys. You got this popular show now. You're like moving up in the world. You got the <laughs> making solo make solo to happen hashtag cranking the celebrities are taking notice <laughs> that's all awesome but you couldn't just like stay in your lane and remain an audio show you had to go to video which is <laughs> like super inconvenient for me because now i have to like put on a shirt uh, i have yep. to comb my hair it's it's a huge inconvenience to me and and this whole background here this is because of you guys all of this <laughs> all the toys. Because, yeah, do you see this this blue back here this paint i had to go to home depot it's actually called resistance blue i had to order it special <laughs> uh, and it's like so i put like um i put like real money into this show uh for you i spent like Fourteen ninety nine or something because <laughs> oh, I went with man. the eggshell. I went with the eggshell finish. It's um, perfect. So uh, I had to. I had to. I had to get rid of the old. You know, you couldn't. I couldn't just deal. The, the off white was no longer working for your level of show. Uh, <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know that I, I actually put money in and and did some work to actually get all this wow. uh well, up and running so uh all it's all because of the video so anyway i, I wow rant over rant over i'm done but anyway. excellent. Yeah. excellent um i don't even know what to say to that that was a fabulous rant <laughs> that's a way really, to kick off that's really and, uh, let me say, uh, we're thankful for you then clayton on this thanksgiving uh for for doing all of that and, and spending the star wars production sized budget to put together you your go. scenery back there um yeah it, it's fantastic um all told it was like 20 bucks so it's all right yeah <laughs> yeah i mean yeah people who are audio listeners now are going to be like now i gotta switch to you now i gotta click over yeah. i gotta click on yeah. that link yeah i gotta right. gotta, gotta <laughs> check out that video yeah gotta click but it. Um, um, but no it's it's good to be here i am man i am stuffed on garlic mashed potatoes i gotta tell you <laughs> <laughs> but i'm ready i'm here to talk all right so before we uh dive into will of the force um let's uh go around and quickly say as they do on these Thanksgiving type of shows. One thing uh, current in Star Wars that we're thankful for, and Clayton, since you are our guest, why don't you uh, set the bar? Uh, I am I am just thankful for this being the season of Star Wars. We not only have The Mandalorian, which is just awesome, um, and I'm, I'm loving every episode of it now, uh, but... Uh, I'm, I'm thankful that we have we have this uh, final movie in the Skywalker saga coming up. I mean, I think that's what I'm most looking forward to and most thankful for that we we made it all this way. Uh, so yeah, I would have to I would have to say the rise of Skywalker probably you know tops the list, but the season of Star Wars overall. Well put, I like that. Uh, Lacey, what about you? 
I'm thankful for sweet baby Yoda, a.k.a. Tiny, <laughs> that we call him on the show, because he has single-handedly, without saying a word, united this fandom in a way that no <laughs> one... Single-handedly? Like, yes. I did that on purpose. Oh, that no nice. one would have assumed would happen. But here we yes. are. So thank you, Tiny. That's a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. Yeah. James, how about you? Uh, I'm actually thankful for the positivity behind Jedi Fallen Order. Like, right. I think that that game is very well received on all fronts, which is just a huge a win for for everybody that has played the, the previous Disney, you know what I mean, or EA games, and uh, for all the people that really look forward to, like, a good story that that ties in with everything and feels important and actually feels like you get a lot of hours of gameplay and the fight system and everything it feels like all around the the reviews of that game uh, have been almost completely positive and everybody's like really happy with it and i'm right in the middle of uh enjoying the story as well so i'm really glad that that thing exists i have it it's great yeah yeah, I gotta, I gotta get a machine. I got nothing. Um, <laughs> I, I have a, I have a. You have a baby. <laughs> yeah, I have a baby who, who actually, I, I don't want to throw him under the bus, but he broke my PlayStation Three, so that's done. Wow. <laughs> so get so, used to that. I get used yeah. to that. My kids have broken two big screen TVs like in the last three years. So really, wow. <laughs> one was throwing a lightsaber. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> he was. I think he was four at the time, and he threw a lightsaber and hit it. And then uh, maybe, I don't know, six months ago, he and his sister were fighting over the remote and the remote went through the air and hit the screen. So get used to your children destroying everything. (laughs) (laughs) That's very Kylo Ren of him to destroy the TV with the lightsaber, I guess. Yeah. Um, I was going to buy a new TV tomorrow. Yeah. Black Friday. Too. Yeah, I guess oh. not. I have to rethink that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to say same same as you, Clayton. I'm thankful for the rise of Skywalker for two reasons. One, uh, seven years ago, I never would have imagined that um, I would have liked what happened. I, ironically enough, when they first made the announcement that they were making sequels, I was like, "Oh, they're going to ruin it. It ended perfectly with Return of the Jedi." Blah blah blah. And here we are, and I'm so excited about it. But then also, I'm glad that we're going to be finally moving past the baggage of the Skywalkers, the whole, you know, people are upset how they were handled or whatever. Now we can finally move forward with new stories and no one could claim ownership to characters if we're all starting on page one. So I think I'm thankful for new Star Wars stories coming up, too. Um, But either way, like you said, season of Star Wars, uh, you're going to put that on a T-shirt, I'm sure, and make tons of money because that is (laughs) the trademark alliteration tag of the the episode here. Um, But now it is time to answer some questions in uh, a segment we call Will of the Force, and James is going to steer us through that now. So, James, what do we got going on? I fear nothing for all this as the Force wills it. This week we got... Four questions, uh, but still two Patreon submissions. So two patrons are going to be on the show. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started with uh, these questions, these will will questions. You know what I mean? mm. um, Clayton, you ready for this? I, I hope so, yes. All right, so listen <laughs> to this one because you're first up, all right? Okay, all right, you got it. Will John Favreau <laughs> be announced as the director of the 2022 Star Wars movie? Oh, that's a good one. Um... I I don't know, but if it were my choice, uh, now that we've all seen episode three of The Mandalorian, I think we can all agree, mm-hmm. right, that Deborah Chow, <laughs> Deborah Chow just, I think, knocked it out of the park with her episode, and I would tomorrow hand the keys over uh, uh, Star Wars to, to Deborah Chow. I think she, uh, it, it was my favorite episode uh, yet, and, um, and it was just so perfectly blended for me um what what star wars is about sort of the the moral center of it and i i would i would love it if uh when they made that announcement that it was deborah chow i think she would just i do a fantastic job all right Lacey, what do you think john favreau is he going to be leading it um i would like him to but i don't think he will because i think he's got other stuff going on and i think they have someone else in mind all right, John. The uh, Favre or the John Bros. 
the, the John, I wish I was <laughs> bro. Um, uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I think Star Wars movies are going to be filming in that new fancy Pinewood location in England. And I think Favreau probably hasn't left California in the last 10 years. Um, so uh, I think he's chilling with Mandalorian, a half hour drive to work. Uh, he can keep doing that show or, or other things. And, you know, that THR article saying he may be more involved in the creative side in terms of overseeing stuff than maybe directing. So I don't think him. But the, the Deborah Chow thing that Clayton said excites me because she's doing the Kenobi series, the six episodes of that. So they obviously trust her based on, you know, what she did with the Mandalorian to mm-hmm. just give her Kenobi, mm-hmm. which is a fan like cherished thing. So I like that pick there, but Favreau, no, I don't think so. Uh, John, I agree with you, but I will have to say that I do know for a fact, John Favreau was in Europe because I saw Spider-Man <laughs> far from home. Yep. Oh, happy. <laughs> I didn't see that. No, one actually he's good? so good with visual effects. We have no clue. He might've been he in is. the back yeah, lot, yeah, on top of the building. Um, as far as him <laughs> directing, I'm still going to go with, uh, no, yeah, I agree. I, I think that uh, he would be perfect, but I think he would be perfect at what they pegged him for. Like, this is, it's so great that we get that voice for exactly what he's doing. I don't want, I don't want them to pick one person and be like, hey, you were good at this. Do you want to do everything? I think mm. we still need to kind of expand some names a little bit and you mm-hmm. know, let them keep doing The Mandalorian or, or other shows or whatever, so... Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. This one's actually uh, uh, the patron submission. This one's coming from Commander Joey. Joey, our commander, wants to know, will Tiny, which is AKA this is not Yoda, <laughs> that's what Tiny stands for, uh, have any lines in The Mandalorian aside from the cooing? John, we're starting with you on this one. Mm. Uh, yes. Um Yoda started training Jedi when he was 100 years old. This guy is... Oh, I don't know if they know what gender he is or whatever. This tiny is halfway there at 50, and uh, I think it's a little smarter than we may be assuming. Uh, so I think we're going to... I hope so. I think it'd be kind of cool to hear some um, younger-sounding Yoda speak. Some commas in there, words flipped around, switched around. Um, yeah, so I'm going to say yes. A little, little speaking going on with tiny. All right, Clayton, what do you think? Will Tiny be talking? <laughs> uh, I think he'll be talking, but maybe not much. I, I, I envision a scene where um, it's all going down. It's Tiny Yoda, the Mandalorian, in the middle of it, and something has to be done. Uh, only the Mandalorian can do it. Maybe he says, I can't do this, or, you know, I can't do this, and Tiny Yoda, not being quite as experienced as other Yoda has one word. He goes, try. Ah. <laughs> Maybe. That's <I> perfect. <laughs> That's pretty good. Lacey, uh, will we be talking? Yeah, I think Tiny is definitely talking in the Mandalorian at some point. I, I agree with Clayton. I think it's going to be at a pivotal scene where we haven't heard him talk at all. And then at the right moment, he says one word, a sentence, something so that the Mando's <laughs> like, wait, what? You yeah. can talk? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's how it's going down. Like a silent Bob situation. Yeah. Like, there you go. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That he didn't expect him to talk the whole time. And then he says something and he's like, I've been talking to myself or I thought I was this whole time. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Um, man, I was going to say no, but all three of your answers convinced me. I like all that. <laughs> um, although it, it is kind of funny. We, I wonder if, uh, we hear the voice and it kind of ruins the, thing like he uh, starts talking he's like hey we gotta go to the place and it's like uh <laughs> it's like the baby from zootopia you know what I mean? yeah, he like he's... pops the pacifier out and he like lights right. up a cigarette or whatever or like roger like, rabbit <laughs> or the same deal yeah there yeah. you go um yeah so i'm i actually you guys kind of convinced me i love clayton's try that's like that's perfect like <laughs> um Before he's all right learning. so let's uh let's move on to the next one we got uh the next question here is Will the Ian McDermott Palpatine we see in The Rise of Skywalker actually be a clone created from the Emperor's remains? Uh, Lacey, you're starting off this cloning question. No, it will not. It's not a clone. (laughs) Stop with the clones. We're done. No, it will not. It's actually him. Okay, sorry. 
It just all came out so quickly. It's not a clone. <laughs> it's not a clone. John, are you going to clone her answer? Copy that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting booed so hard out there right yeah. now. That's all right. Dead, oh. so Dead oh. Yeah. Um No, uh, I do not think he's a clone. Um, but I thought this was kind of a prov- provocative question to ask because some people may not like the idea that he survived because of it takes away from Vader's sacrifice a little bit. So I'm curious mm-hmm. how people lean with it, but I, you know, I'm cloned out as I've said on the podcast. So I hope not. So therefore I'm going to say he is not, uh, it's, it's good old fashioned, 125 years old, uh, sweet baby, sheafy babes. <laughs> Clayton, do you have an answer? What do you think? Yeah, you know, I, I would have said no originally because I, I don't think you take an iconic character like that and just clone them and bring them back and all of a sudden there they are. Then I started thinking about it a little bit and I was thinking it, uh, about the uh, this doctor, uh, is it Pershing? What's the guy's name in... Um Oh, yes. yeah. Mandalorian, Mandalorian, right? So I started yeah. thinking about him and, you know, people were online saying that he's got this patch that's apparently, you know, the uh, uh, from uh, Camino. With Camino. Uh, associated Camino with the, the, yeah, all of the, guys, the, the cloners on Camino. Right. So w- here's my scenario. Don't uh, do this, Clayton. Don't, you could turn back. <laughs> I think he might be, and here's why: because <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna have the Mandalorian and the Rise of Skywalker kind of overlapping. I think it's two two episodes of the Mandalorian after uh, the Rise of Skywalker comes out. If I'm if I have my dates right, but anyway, here's my scenario: I think that maybe this Doctor Pershing and the Empire they're out to get Tiny Yoda. They don't get him because ultimately Mandalorian saves the day. And they don't get their hands on on uh, Tiny Yoda, Baby Yoda. <laughs> so they continue their search, and it eventually leads them to this ocean planet with the you know wreckage of the Star Destroyer. And they I see this scene where they pull back a piece of wreckage, and there's this you know decaying corpse of the Emperor underneath. And they take oh. they they take a sample and and then you know DNA and then and then recreate. The Emperor, but it's because they don't get Baby Yoda that they then go continue their search and find uh, find Emperor so, DNA and, and continue it. So and that's my theory. So so then I, I'm breaking the rules of Will of the Force here, but yep, this this really is like firing my my synapses and everything here. So is this like the Emperor will take his spirit and in and like interject it into this new body? So it is still his conscience, but it's in a new vessel. You think? Oh or my is gosh, it- this is getting bananas. <laughs> oh, now now you're really going down the rabbit hole. That's a good question. I didn't think it through that far. Yeah. <laughs> I told it, you it you could have turned back, right. Layton. <laughs> it is one one episode after the rise of Skywalker. R- oh, I, one episode after. Okay, so you know maybe maybe there's a maybe there's a possibility because I feel like I feel like uh, Favreau is very capable of playing the long game here and yeah. would have maybe worked in some sort of. Tie tie in. I I don't think it's entirely coincidental. The wow. the, rele- the release schedule and the movie release schedule. Uh, right. Of course, I could be. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. And Disney Plus isn't talking to the studio, and we're just releasing stuff whenever we want. Uh, but that was my that was my theory. I, I was not on the cloning bandwagon until I started thinking about. Well, maybe maybe this guy from this Doctor Pershing has some <laughs> um, later, more important role that we don't know about yet. Know. It's in, it's interesting, and you it's know a what? theory. We, that's why we podcast. So it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my overall answer to it is, is no. Um, but I do think that if they went that route, I've said this before, it's not a bad story. It's not a weak story. I think they can totally do something really cool with that. And where it starts to make sense, and you were saying this, Clayton, is how deep do they want to go into the synergy? You know what I mean? Disney right. as a company, they're putting a lot into the movies, but Boy, are they putting a lot. Uh, Bob is putting his whole career on This Is My Legacy, Disney Plus, right? So if if he has anything to say about it, it would be great to put his big marquee movie tied in with, oh, what? You weren't watching our Disney Plus shows? Better get that subscription, you know? Right. That marketing makes so much sense. So I know it doesn't necessarily have to be about the clone, 
but it really does make you question whether Rise of Skywalker is going to be directly correlated with the Mandalorian. But right. We'll find it, out, I guess. And, and this all this all reminds me of of a conversation that I once had with Dave Filoni, and it was in uh, Orlando after the the season four Rebels panel, I think, where mm-hmm. they're you, you know they had just talked about what was coming up and. Uh, it was sort of the first time that I had, anyway, had a chance to kind of ask him about all the all the Rebels Easter eggs that popped up in Rogue One. And I remember asking him if, you know, what is the is the end of Rebels then going to take place at the Battle of Scarif? And he kind of thought about it and he said, you know, nobody's ever asked me that question. And he said, I, I wouldn't probably ever take, you know, this set of characters and this set of stories that we've been working on for years and then inject them into somebody else's story. So it's very possible that that they will have no connection uh, mm-hmm. between the two shows um, uh, because they, they want to have them stand on their own and be their own self-contained stories and not have to rely on other stuff, other stories right, to make them right. make sense. Mm-hmm. So it's possible they don't have any, but uh, I'm kind of hoping they somehow tie together. I mean, it's it's interesting to say the least. Yeah. You got me yeah. thinking. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to the last Will the Force question, and that is from our... <laughs> Just what? read it. Just read the question. We. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is coming from Commander Paul Howe. Uh, Will Tiny, a.k.a. Baby Yoda, yeah. have a connection to the Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> Uh, Clayton, you want to? You you <laughs> I would, you know, I, I'm going to say no. I, I, I think it would probably be a little too on the nose. Although, you know, like, like I said, there could be some sort of crossover. Um, I don't think, I don't think anyway. They would, they would um, be that sort of leading with it. I, I, I don't, I don't. If he pops up, I don't, I don't see it being a, a major character or a major plot point. But I could be sure. wrong, and that would actually, you know, that would be cool. That would, I would have no problem with that. Um, I just, I, for sort of the reason I said earlier, I, I don't think that Filoni and team would necessarily n- want to hang this character or you know make it. Um, uh, I, I think they would want to wrap it up in their own show versus. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, yep. Pawn it up to that, but but it's entirely entirely possible. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it would be cool if it happened. I just don't think it will. How's that for an answer? Yeah, that's an answer. Lacey, what do you got? What yeah, you I completely agree with Clay, and I think that I would think it would be cool to see for him to show up because obviously he'd be a full adult at this period of time. Um, but I don't think it will because it gives away the ending of the Mandalorian because you know where they end up. So I think by the, the idea that point. they give away everything and where, like, even if he's not with the Mandalorian and he appears in the Rise of Skywalker, your immediate response is going to be like, oh, the Mandalorian dies or, oh, he gives up Baby Yoda or whatever. So right. yeah. I think there's too much laying on That's it as, point. yeah, of giving it away. So no, he will not. I wish he would, though. <laughs> <laughs> John, what do you got? I'm going to say no for... um like the really bah humbug reason, like the business reason, like there was no guarantee that everyone was going to subscribe to Disney plus or get on board with the Mandalorian and to put that on JJ and be like, you got to put this character into your movie because Favreau's doing it over here. Like JJ would be like, screw you. Like I'm not taking, I got to finish the story. I started telling you now you got to have me put a baby Yoda in. They're already calling me a rehasher <laughs> and you want me to put Yoda in my third movie. Like get out of here. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So, um, I think there were just too many like risks involved with the D plus thing. And, uh, when they started filming the Mandalorian compared to when they started filming the rise of Skywalker, I think a lot of things changed during the rise of Skywalker filming process. So mm-hmm. to say it was a set like road and we're going on it. If it was Colin Trevorrow still doing it, I'd be like, Oh yeah, definitely. They'll do that. They'll, they'll put 30 Yodas in this thing, but mm-hmm. I don't think JJ is doing it. Um, but I mean, if it happens, I'll still be like, that's pretty satisfying. So I don't know, mm-hmm. but I, I'm going to say no. Um, I want it to happen. 
My answer is I don't think it will happen because yeah. that's just more likely. Yeah. But I want it to happen. And I, I thought about this. My, my way that I would do it is showing the end where everybody wants that payoff of like, Ray is now with a new group of force sensitives or something. She's going to start her own group or whatever. And I would love for one of those people just to happen to be Yoda's species, right? And I almost think that could be something just like what we got back with the Saw Gerrera thing where uh, somebody, you know, they were working on creating a character and the story group said, actually, we already have this character. We have someone who would be perfect for you. I think if JJ said, I want a Yoda species in this group shot and, and they go, <laughs> we actually have someone who would be perfect for this. Let's put him in there. Let's tie the connections there. And behind the scenes, all JJ said was Yoda behind the scenes. They go, let's make that synergy happen. You know, mm. they take they use that to the advantage. Now, I think that would be really cool, yeah. but um, that's it for all the force guys. Well, Let's. Uh, I'm going to send it over to Lacey right now. We're going to do a quick Patreon pod race. All right, guys, it's time for the Patreon pod race. So as you guys know, we have a Patreon page at patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. It's a way for you to support us outside of watching the show, liking it, commenting, etc. Um, and our top tier, our generals get an opportunity to be on the show. So this week we have Andrew Staley, General Andrew. And he is, or he was asked, has the production and effects of The Mandalorian increased your confidence and excitement in future Star Wars Disney Plus series? Or is it still, or does it still not measure up to the films in your opinion? Andrew, take it away. Thanks, guys. Yeah, the graphics and everything for The Mandalorian have been just amazing. Uh, it's like watching a full theatrical film for 30 to 40 minutes while sitting in my living room. It's been everything that the movies have offered um, right there in your TV, in your living room. It's um, I'm absolutely looking forward to everything that's coming along, uh, stuff that we know about and stuff that we don't, a la Make Solo 2 happen. Um, obviously, the Kenobi series is what I'm really looking forward to coming down the pipe. Um, all the visuals, stunning. Uh, looking forward to seeing more of the space battles with the Razor Crest. Um, but everything so far has been impressive. And can't wait to see more of it, especially uh, coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, I'm sure we're just scratching the surface thus far. So thanks a, guy. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, may the Force be with you and make Solo 2 happen. All right. Well, first of all, love your T-shirt. Make Solo 2 happen. We agree. <laughs> That is a fabulous idea. I don't know where you got it. <laughs> just I don't know. Excellent. You probably uh, bought it off Amazon. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I would love to see a solo series as you would. But I'm going to let John take this first. John, what do you what do you think of Andrew's so pod race? Andrew's like I don't want to say his pod races are predictable, but they are in terms <laughs> of tone because he's like so positive about mm -hmm. star wars even like things that may not be going the way he likes he finds something to love about it and i i think that's so awesome uh andrew um but you you, know, you make up a good point maybe we'll see more space battle actions and stuff and granted you know full disclosure to people watching and listening out there andrew did this pod race after only seeing two episodes of the mandalorian so uh he didn't see episode three yet of course we all have at this point but the mm -hmm. that the fact is gonna be more action and that sort of thing you're excited about that and you said that the effects are there you love uh how they use the mandalorian armor all that sort of thing is right you know, in line with what you were expecting and that's great and uh, again yeah love the mix all the two happen t-shirt and uh, I'm so sorry to hear that your favorite NASCAR driver, Jimmy Johnson, is retiring after next year. I know you're very <laughs> upset about that, but I hope this pod rates helped lift your spirits, man. And thanks for all the support. James? Uh, yeah, again, I totally agree. I think that that's a, that's a good way to sum it up. Also, too, this question reminded me of a question that we got a while ago about Star Wars and visual effects. And, you know, aside from the whole Tarkin thing. And I totally forgot to mention the Mandalorian and how far they're pushing everything with the void and all these like yeah. how the camera and the video game effects are are, are uh, syncing together and all this. It's like absolutely, man. The Mandalorian is is going above and beyond, just like the Lion King did, to to show us like new forms <laughs> of of filmmaking. And and yeah, this this is a this was a good question and a good answer, Andrew. Yeah, I agree with both of them. Um, because I do, I'm just going to comment on your background. You have an amazing collection, and oh, I'm very nice. jealous of it. Yeah. Um, I want all your toys, all your Black Series <laughs> toys. Clayton, we're going to ask you now, 
has your confidence increased because the production value and everything of the Mandalorian? What are you thinking moving forward to Disney Plus series? Like, are you pumped? I, I'm totally pumped only because, you know, when you think of a, a television show or a, a series, you know, usually they're done faster and cheaper and you can tell when you watch it. And right. I think the Mandalorian has been the exact opposite of that. And I've actually talked to uh, a couple people who have either been to the set or, or working on the show. And to hear ILM people say this is groundbreaking is pretty, <laughs> pretty impressive because they don't say that that often. And this whole mm -hmm. volume thing where they're basically surrounding smaller, uh, you know, 3D set pieces with these high resolution LED screens uh, that are apparently just blowing people away. I talked to one person who walked into the stage where they had all this stuff set up and they're kind of looking around and, and taking it all in. And all of a sudden, um, a piece of the set just like disappeared, like, like flew off. Mm -hmm. And this person was convinced that it was a 3D set piece until somebody like off camera somewhere, you know, clicked, clicked something on the computer to make it disappear because they were oh changing things around. God. So it was in person that good that people are being fooled that you're looking at a built set when it's actually, you know, completely in the computer, which is just sort of mind boggling. And I kind of wonder now what, you know, and first of all, first of all, the show looks amazing. It's Greg Frazier. It's, you know, the guy that did Rogue One. Um, the, the style, the aesthetic of it is is really great anyway. But I was kind of wondering what this might do to future movie production because, you know, they're not going to, they're making it look like they are, but they're not going to these three exotic locations that every Star Wars movie goes to to film. They're going right. to this this studio in Manhattan Beach, right? So <laughs> it's, it's I kind of wonder if, uh, if, future Star Wars movies will maybe, maybe the productions will start migrating back to Southern California, perhaps, uh, because there's certainly, I mean, I can't, I can't tell. I try to look for where the seams are and where the, you know, and, uh, right. and, and I can't tell. So uh, it absolutely, it absolutely measures up to the movies for me. It, it probably depends on the 2022 director. Right. It could. Yeah. <laughs> without a doubt. All right. Deborah Chow. Awesome. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, Andrew, thank you for your answer. And guys, thank you for your support on Patreon. Now we're going to head to John to go into the discussion. Obi Wan once thought as you do. Okay, guys. So, yeah, usually we have a focus topic for these discussions. Um, but what we really want to do here, it is Thanksgiving. Um, just kind of open it up here and kind of like uh, sit around the, the table and have a, a chat about the present and future of Star Wars. Um, you know, we have it's 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 like a golden era or it's like right now, Clayton said the season of Star Wars, you have resistance animated series mandalorian live action series the rise of skywalker the juggernaut blockbuster coming out then you have the clone wars which is coming back in february you have a lot of books and comics that you can't even keep up with uh it, they're just fall so much order. fall in order the video game i keep forgetting that because my son destroyed my yeah. ps3 and i don't even have a ps4 <laughs> but there's so much coming down the line with kenobi and and future movies um so i kind of want to start in, in the present and then we can look forward so, Clayton, I'll start with you as our guest. Uh, I'll, I'll pass you the mashed potatoes here and say, uh, <laughs> has the hype, has the Mandalorian buzz and that sort of thing sapped any of your hype or excitement for the rise of Skywalker? Or is it kind of uh, uh, appetized you? Or, or where are you at with that? Because like, with me, I almost took a little breather. So I just want to see like where you're at with the Mandalorian yeah. versus uh, rise of Skywalker. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I uh, I will admit I was a little bit lukewarm on the first episode of The Mandalorian. I love the way it, it looked. Um, it didn't t quite feel like Star Wars to me. And I think what kind of threw me, um, initially anyway, was the music. It was so different from that John Williams uh, right. that, that we're all used to and the, the adaptations that... Um, that people like Chikino and Powell have done. And so I kind of expected them to kind of stay in their lane a little bit with the music and they didn't. Um, and I, I found myself in that first episode noticing the music. And I feel like when you notice the music or, and it takes you out of it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But I got to say in, in the subsequent episodes, I, I think it totally fits the uh, sort of space Western uh, feel that they're that they're going for. It's uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of used to it, and I actually 
found myself humming uh, some of the themes the other day, which then I then I then I realized that that it was. Uh, you know, got you. I, I'd gotten over it. Yeah, I'd gotten over it. But I remember doing that the, the same way with um, the Rogue One soundtrack a little bit. It took me a little while to get into that. And then, you know, I, I have that on repeat all the time anyway. But um, so, yeah, so the Mandalorian started a little slow for me. I wasn't quite sure where I was going. Uh, that last five minutes kind of hooked me. And then the second episode was great. And then the third episode was fantastic. So uh, I, I am totally on board with uh, with the Mandalorian. Now. I'm very excited to see see where it goes nice you know you don't have to, you don't have to ask james about rogue one score he'll go on yeah. for days about giacchino yeah yeah not a fan <laughs> he's he's no, amazing oh you are a fan yeah. gotcha yeah. Yeah. yeah well especially considering you know the i mean he's genius being able to pull that off in just a few weeks is uh is you gotta give him credit for that yeah yeah without a doubt um uh, yeah, I uh, hype wise, you know, it's funny. Like, I think I put tr- episode nine on the back burner in my brain when Mandalorian first came out, Disney Plus came out, because then I yeah. also I also dove into the 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 whole 4K uh, original trilogy and all that stuff, and and they refixed the tones of that. Uh, like, I'm watching Empire, and they're like, look, they restored the color of Han's jacket back to brown, and you know all the nerdy you know stuff with that so it's not even right. just mandalorian like star wars in general and disney plus like took my brain away from the hype of rise of skywalker and then like last week they punched yeah. us in the face with all the marketing so yeah yeah James yeah I, yeah yeah um I, I i've been very curious as to how people are going to react to the rise of skywalker after getting a weekly dose of live action star wars you know, I'm I'm almost yeah. kind of curious if people are going to be like, yeah, and then next week, yeah, and then next week, yeah, and then they go in and it's like two hours. It's like, oh, it's over. You know, like <laughs> like it just that two hour movie is going to go so fast. It holds a lot of weight in the bigger story. Mm-hmm. So I think people, yeah. I mean, it's not going to get like completely lost to the Mandalorian show, but it does kind of feel like um, Mandalorian might kind of impede a little bit on that whole like it's such a treat we've waited so long for some live action star wars content and we're finally getting well we just got like you know four or five hours of it. but but besides <laughs> that you know yeah, it's like right, kind of this right. weird kind of thing i don't know there's a lot going on right now a lot yeah, there's definitely a ton going on. I made a joke online about how it's like Matilda where Bruce is eating the chocolate cake and he's eating it and eating it and eating it. And then she's like, oh, you want more? And he's like, no. And then they bring out a whole big chocolate cake for him to eat. It's like the same thing with Star Wars <laughs> content because every new thing that comes out, I'm like, wait, I just haven't had time to process this one thing. And now you're giving me more, which, of course, you can never have too much Star Wars content. But I, it's just a lot to take in and I mm-hmm. feel like my brain kind of hurts because it's like trying to keep up with everything and the moment that you don't keep up with it you're already behind yep. um you know I made a lot of jokes about how no sleep till the rise of Skywalker and it's completely true like none of us are getting any sleep because <laughs> it's just constantly uh you have to be on with Star Wars right now yeah. which I love but I'm going to love a very nice nap after the, the last episode of Mandalorian. And we have a little bit of a breather. Well, that was yeah. my question for you guys, because it, it, you, you're, you're following every little thing every single day, even in a mm-hmm. way that, that I'm not. And most casual fans are not. You don't ever feel like you're just like drinking from a fire hose. Because when I was a kid, we got a Star Wars movie every three years and you were happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. And now I mean... <laughs> I, I always try to use uh, like my brother as my control because yeah. he is like movies or bust. So he's almost on that like, oh, it's uh, two years later. It's another Star Wars movie or so, you know, that sort of thing. Like he doesn't really mm-hmm. know who Os- uh, Ahsoka Tano is. And, you know, yeah. he, so he's not like crazy like we all are. Um, so I, it makes me want to like turn that to like the casual audience that is gearing up for the rise of Skywalker and you know oh a Star Wars movie's coming out all right I guess we'll 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 get tickets and go, um, but for the diehard fan it's like we like you said we've been drinking from the fire hose just pummeled with so much content that now that's the new normal, so when <laughs> if we get into the lulls like next you know May Resistance will be done Clone Wars will be done and we'll be like. 
just like trying to get as much info out of the filming production for Kenobi that we'll be scrapping for right. news. And we'll be like, oh, we missed the oversaturation of, uh, you know, the season of Star Wars. So it's, I don't know. It's, Take it's, it while you can get it. Yeah, exactly. And I don't <laughs> want to say it's like the entitlement thing, because we were talking with Mark Newbold, who was on last week with us. And he was like, yeah, when I was a kid, it was three years and you just waited three years. And sometimes they gave you a comic book. And now <laughs> and now we're like, oh, we got to wait a week for the next Mandalorian. Like, it's just right, such a, yeah, yeah. it's such a different era that we live in. Just society like a society. I don't know. Agreed. Yeah. It's our version of walking uphill in the snow to school both ways. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Like, we had it so rough. Yeah. <laughs> It's so, so funny you say that about the casual age, fan. There was so much content. <laughs> I, I was reading too many comic books. Like, right, yeah. yeah. It's funny you say that about the casual fan, though, because my coworkers, which you know, I'm with them every day for eight to ten hours. Um, so they often ask me about Star Wars and what's going on, and all of them have said, "Oh, I haven't like seen any of the new ones. The only one I saw was that one. What's that one with Han Solo?" And I was like, "The Force Awakens." And they're like, "Yeah, I saw that one yeah. because everyone <laughs> saw that one, and right. then no one else has seen anything else. Like they're all like, "Oh, okay." Uh, and I'm like, "How is this? How are what? How yeah. are you operating? Like, because right. I feel like if I miss one thing, I'm like." not living <laughs> not living my life it's weird somebody it's... told me is that coming out soon the right <laughs> you know, and i was like yeah uh yeah <laughs> I, try, I didn't try to like over you know it, exemplify it... how much you're missing it but yeah i was like yeah yep it's uh this december right it right it bothers me when people treat like the next star wars movie as like bad boys three like it's just like they're just like oh it's <laughs> It's another action movie? Okay, I guess right. I'll, I'm free Friday. Like, it's such an event for fans who love Star Wars. So when I mm -hmm. see casual people being like, oh, I'll go check it out, I'm like, why don't you love this thing? Like, I <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I get that, Lacey. Right on. Yeah. Hey, Clay, last time uh, you were here, we were talking a lot about the Leia stuff. Yeah. And how they were going to use her. Um, did you read this uh, thing from uh, JJ when he was talking in Rolling Stone about the the scene that they didn't use in the Force Awakens? Uh, it was it was it leading up to Hosni and Prime, yeah, getting blasted, right? Yeah, yeah. So there was supposed to be a character um, which we right. know from the Bloodline book. This goes into we're we're more than casual fans. It goes into the Bloodline book a character Corsell. Uh, or Corsella now, I can't remember her name exactly, yeah. but she was uh, sent by Leia specifically to go to Hosnian Prime to meet with these people and stuff, and there was supposed to be this element of like connection to specific characters, mm. and they ended up uh, cutting that, and right. you know, they talked a little bit about um, you know, why uh, you know, necessarily, but he said in turn, it was good that we didn't, because now I had these very specific scenes that we didn't use. And I'm like, oh, that kind of yeah. paints a little bit of a picture of what we might see in this movie as far as we have footage of Carrie Fisher saying lines that might be similar to what she would tell Core mm. on her way to go, yeah. you know, get people uh, for right. the resistance and stuff. So, I, you know, sure. I kind of painted a little bit of a picture of what we might see in this movie. I don't know what your thoughts were on yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but it seems like it would be uh, some, as Leia did so well, you know, uh, conveying the uh, importance of the, the moment at hand, right? And, uh, mm -hmm. and maybe that, maybe that is how, uh, maybe that's, I mean, that's, I, I don't I don't know, but it seems seems to be appropriate and seems like you could easily kind of tweak that uh, to to make it fit. And again, I don't know if they they may be using a voice actor to complete certain lines. You know, you can do a cutaway shot to mm -hmm. whoever Leia is talking to. And if you can match yeah. the voice closely enough, um, mm. you know, you can you can come up with lines that you didn't have uh, filmed. And mix them with the lines that you did have filmed. So um, I think there's a lot of tricks, filmmaking tricks, that they'll be able to uh, to incorporate into that. But that's that's interesting. Now that we know kind of where uh, potentially those those cut scenes came from, that's cool. That scene is actually on the DVD as a deleted scene. You can watch it. It's a scene Wait, where what? they're is it. 
Yeah, you can go on the DVD. It's um, she's talking to her about how she needs her to go to Hosnian Prime, and the girl says something like, "Don't you think you should be the one to go?" And she's like, "They don't want me there," or something like that. She says something wow. snarky. I didn't and know then, that. I didn't know that. Yeah, and then the girl you see when the laser is hitting Hosnian Prime is the girl that Leia is talking to. Okay. Uh-huh. And so when we did our TFA commentary recently on Patreon, that's why I brought that up because that scene is there where they show Leia talking to her so you have the connection of them so that when she dies, you have more of an impact of Leia sent this girl here and she dies. Right. Wow. Yeah, you, that's you, crazy. you had a connection. The deleted yeah. scene was there. Yeah. Is so I don't know. Scene? I'm sure they took multiple takes that he's pulling from, but yeah, that scene's in there. And I believe the clip I watched even had some preface to it where JJ explains why they cut it or something like that. It's on the DVD though, because I watched it w- with the other deleted scenes from. The yeah. Force so weekend. it just went to Disney Plus and went under their extra section. It does say deleted scene Leia and the Resistance. It's 15 seconds and it shows Corsella. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's thumbnail. not super long, but right. that's probably where they got the lines from. But it's like, she, you need yeah. to go do this. But she says something to Leia like, oh, shouldn't you be the one? And she she makes some Leia, Carrie Fisher snarky, like, yeah, they sure. don't want me over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't they use, say the Death they, Star. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they said, yeah, it's funny, Clayton, you said voice actor, because I was thinking that too, because the voice actor who does her voice now for Resistance really sounds like modern Carrie Fisher sounded. Um, yeah. So it's possible they could have tabbed her to, like you say, from behind her head or, you know, uh, sneak yeah. out a word in here or say Ray even or, or you know, so, you know how you appropriate a certain sentence at somebody. Um, right. But they used, you know, eight minutes of footage they're saying now. But they it's funny, they keep saying just TFA. And I know you had said, Todd Fisher said they also were able to maybe nab some stuff from TLJ. <laughs> Do you think yeah. that changed I, at all? Or? I don't know. I don't know what's well. I don't know what's made it into the final cut. I know that they had the option to use uh, stuff from TFA as well, but you know, till we see the final cut, I, I don't know. I don't know where exactly they pulled mm-hmm. it from. But I know that that you know, according mm-hmm. to Todd Fisher, that is where um, he he says he was told by JJ that they had um, minutes uh, minutes of footage from TFA as well. So A TLJ, you saying? I mean. The Last Jedi, right. Yeah, Last yeah. Jedi. Right. Um, and then, um, so we did a report via um, some special effects tips that they also were able to use existing shots from The Force Awakens visually and age her differently and and put her in a location that may not necessarily be dialogue or they could, they could move the mouth, but using mm-hmm. existing shots that were in the film, repurpose them and use them for the rise of Skywalker. And I found that to be very interesting as well. Yeah. I think there's, they have a lot of, a lot of tricks in the bag. I mean, ILM, uh, they can, they can do anything. <laughs> and between that and, you know, the wizards at Skywalker sound too, I think that, uh, I think they have a lot of options or at least more than, than mm-hmm. we maybe think they did. Do you think she's in more than one big scene? Do you think she's going to be peppered through the movie? Like, what's what's your what's your gut? Because we only see her really in the yeah. like, jungle shots. So. Yeah, my gut would be just a couple of key scenes. Yeah, mm. yeah. But I honestly, I don't know. I would not want to be J.J. Abrams. I mean, having to <laughs> yeah. having to wrap this thing up after nine movies and forty plus years. I mean, it's just he's got the worst job on the planet right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but I would hope, I would hope that she would pop up in a, in a couple of different spots, um, key scenes throughout, but, uh, but I honestly don't know. You think she's yeah. dying? I don't know. You know, he, he has said that they didn't, they didn't feel, they sort of felt like it didn't make sense to, to, to kill her off or to, um, just say that she had gone off somewhere, you know, um, felt l- like a cheat, I think J.J. Abrams said. So I think they'll find some way to um, to give her a, a solid good ending um, without her dying, I, I-, I think. Oh. That's-, that's my prediction. That's my hope anyway. Sure. Yeah. Because I, I figure mm. they're like we've talked about this on the podcast that we may feel like they want to en- make sure they end Leia with Carrie, yeah. so that if they do move forward, they don't have a sticky right. situation where where did she go? Right. 
So that makes me think that maybe they could have her, you know, become a forest ghost, and then you get the group photo shot at the end with her and Luke together or something. You sure. Know? Yeah. Could happen. Um, yeah. But like you say, any 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 way JJ's gonna get heat, or he just has a lot of pressure on him. And people, it's funny. This movie's so big that I feel like people are almost forgetting that how difficult that character is gonna be to bring back, even on a small scale. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. I mean, we haven't really talked about Leia much, so I'm glad that uh, you brought that up, James. Um, but um, I want to talk about... JJ you- brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just so, kidding. <laughs> so um, to close up the discussion part then, we have a movie allegedly coming out, reportedly coming out in 2022. Obviously, things can change. They constantly do. Uh, Benioff and Wise left. Um, first of all, Clayton, were you shocked that they those guys left when you heard? Uh, you know, I was not a Game of Thrones fan, really. I, I watched uh, the first few seasons and my my wife read all the books and she was sort of telling me where they were doing good and bad and where they kind of went off the rails. I, so, I, you know, I, I just I haven't followed them that closely in their careers. And then there was that whole dust up where they sort of felt like, uh, you know, they they. Uh, a lot of people felt like they sort of just fell into this job and weren't qualified to do it, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. which I thought was pretty telling. I mean, that was that was a f- pretty interesting conversation um, and a lot of really interesting things that they uh, admitted to, I guess you could say. Um, sure. So um, I don't know. You know, the, these the, the way these streaming war deals have, have gone down and I could totally see that factoring into it. I, I, I don't know whether they were qualified or not to do Star Wars. A lot of people think they weren't. Um, I don't know. I guess I was a little surprised just because, uh, uh, you know, after what had happened with previous directors on Star Wars films, I figured they might, you know, have... have decided vetted them better to see whether they were a good fit for star wars but i guess is it we're uh, surprised and not surprised because i was surprised that they were gone but uh i mean we'd certainly we had seen it before so it wasn't like a shock that this had happened so all right um so then looking ahead to this 2022 movie which was supposed to be theirs uh according to bob Iger, um i guess let's just go around and and try to get our finger on the pulse of where we think this story is going. Obviously it's not Skywalker based. So, uh, Lacey, start with you. 2022. Are we going, are we still doing, you know, old Republic? Like we thought they were going to do. Are we going forward? Are we going to a different part of the galaxy during the era of the Skywalkers? What do you, what would you like to see? And what do you think? I think they're going to stick with the story that was come up with, which was like the beginning of the Jedi. I think it's a, easy story to tell in the sense of it's one that everyone would want it's not that controversial uh it's not Mm -hmm. something that they really need to explain to a casual audience because everyone knows what a jedi is um and i'm sure there's already some type of outline or groundwork laid to tell the story so i think they're going to stick with that and i hope they do because i really want to see it um right yeah you've been beating that drum for a while yeah i mean well i want like knights of the old republic but (laughs) I yeah. will take Jedi. I, I just love Jedi. You know, it's, it is Star Wars. I know people love, obviously, this podcast loves Solo. We love smugglers. We love bounty hunters. But to me, Star Wars is Jedi, mystical powers, and lightsabers. So if I get a movie of how that came about and all about that, I'm for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I dig that. James, where are you at? Where, what are you thinking? Um, are, We're picking someone too, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Lacey, do you want to throw a guess out for your director or uh, writers or, or anything that you uh, would think makes sense? Oh, my gosh. That I mean, is... We're, yeah, we're all throwing stuff against the wall here, <laughs> Quite, Quite a decision that I'm not <laughs> qualified to make. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. I, I have no idea. Because okay. they've been picking directors that have worked in either Marvel or worked on smaller projects. So... And we've had discussions before about how larger, popular directors are kind of steering clear of Star Wars, which, Clayton, I'm super interested if you've heard that yourself, that you hear people talking about how they're like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to work on Star Wars. (laughs) Yeah. Do I really want to get into that? Yeah. (laughs) Right. Because we had a a long discussion about that recently. Mm. Um, 
So it's tough for me to say because I feel like it would be someone that I haven't directly heard of. Like I would know their work if mm-hmm. someone brought it up with me, but I wouldn't be like, ah, yes, this is my immediate choice. Sure. Mm-hmm. I know that's like a cop out answer, but that's my right. answer. <laughs> hey, um, it works. I mine. Uh, yeah. And John, you said it. We're just throwing names out there. I I think there could be a strong possibility because of how the last one was handled. George Lucas. That, no, this yeah. one gets picked up. Yeah. Uh-huh. By the Russo brothers. Oh, jeez. Because there's something there's something about how massively successful that was and how they handled it very well. There was not no drama, you know what I mean, when it comes to those productions. And they had a lot to accomplish uh, shooting two movies at the same time. You almost think that if they go with this group, they're like, well, we're pretty much we can we know we can trust them. And we can probably even figure out a way to do all three movies at the same time. Because right. do you guys get the feeling that like um, like Joss Whedon, after he did Avengers 2, he was like, dude, I'm done. I'm so tired. I got to get out of this thing. I feel like the Russo brothers are like, more, <laughs> bigger. <laughs> they did visit the Mandalorian and hang out with the uh, yeah. brothers. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, ju- I just get a feeling they're, they're, they could be a really solid choice that if, if – they announced them. Everybody would go, um, but yeah, you can't blame them. <laughs> do you think it's going to follow the um, Old Republic uh, idea that was swirling around? Or do you think it's going to be something we're not even expecting? You know, based on precedent uh, before, like what they've done in the past, I think they might steer clear of it, but I want them to to not do that. Like I want them to do the Jedi origin stuff. I think, I think that's what fans want. So maybe they will stick with it, but it usually is when we hear what so-and-so was working on before they were let go, they abandon the idea. Okay. I have a director, by the way. Okay. Patty Jenkins. Oh, Oh, there you go. That's good. Wonder Woman. I love Wonder Woman and I can't wait for the next one. So I am on board with whatever she does. That would make a lot of people happy, too. Finally, not uh, uh, a white male director Star Wars movie. I get that. She <laughs> she killed Wonder Woman. She killed it. That was a really good movie. I agree. Um, I cried. I, she killed it. I am excited okay. about the second one, too. Um, <laughs> it was good. I will say... My, you sit right. down, Jim. <laughs> I'm just see- saying, it wasn't like the best movie. <laughs> All right, save it for the DC podcast, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I... Um, I think Old Republic makes a lot of sense. I agree with Lacey that it's a it's a thing that fans can get behind and it's a safe choice to start new, but also something that, you know, has buzz with fans that they've been wanting. I think they don't want to just blindside people over the head after giving them the biggest fan service movie of all time with episode nine and being like, we're doing this and it's going to feel nothing like Star Wars. So I think mm-hmm. you're going to see a lot of lightsabers flying around the screen. Um, and my pick for director and... People may be like, eh, and I've said this on the podcast, Ben Affleck. Ugh. Hmm. I look at like Clayton's face. Interesting and choice. Face. <laughs> Clayton's Interesting like, didn't choice. expect that one. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, think I, Ben's I, great, man. I'm, yeah. I'm always behind your back when it comes to the Benny boy. Yeah. Argo, the town. He's, he's a good director. And oh, he he's a great Star director. Wars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying he needs to be in it. I just mean behind the camera. Um, right. But uh, who knows? But Clayton, I know you said already your pick was Deborah Chow. Yeah, to- I'm on the record right. uh, with, with Deborah Chow. Um, but it is interesting to see what they're going to do with uh, Ryan Johnson and Kevin Feige, who's apparently on board. Um, there'll be some. Uh, there'll be some interesting uh, conference calls and uh, meetings and secret conference rooms <laughs> here and there. I, I'm going to go, you know, I, I love the idea of doing the the Old Republic stuff only because it, it, I think, gets harder and harder to try and find that slice of time in sort of the modern-ish era to, to put a good story. But I'm going to go the other direction <laughs> because we have seen all of these movies sort of centered on the good guys and even the the spin-offs you know Rogue One centered on the good guys Solo centered on the good guys mm-hmm. we've got a Cassian series that centers on the you know obviously a a, a rebel um and then a, a Obi-Wan Mandalorian's kind of in the middle he's kind of a gray figure we don't know you know whose side he's on uh from time to time but all you know we've seen a lot of good guys 
I want to see a story about a bad guy. I want to see some <laughs> sort of origin or trilogy about the rise of a, a bad guy, a villain. I, and it could be a new villain. It could be Vader. I mean, they seem to be mining Vader a lot. I mean, it, just last week they announced a brand new comic series mm-hmm. um, run for him on Marvel. So um, I don't know what it would be, but it's sort of like, you know, the the anti-hero, sort of the Tony Soprano-ish kind I of like that. villain, right? You know, the the bad guy, and he's clearly a bad guy, but of course you have to he's your anti-hero and he's gotta have a heart somewhere, so you have to you have to have that humanity part of it. But uh but I'm looking for some some bad guy story. And I, I, I mean, would be happy with a Vader. Thing. Chronicle? No. You didn't? No. Oh, okay. I, I was like, that to me is like exactly what you're describing. Oh, okay. New movie, old movie? I'll write it down. It, it's an older movie. Um, okay. It's got Dane DeHaan and uh, Michael B. Jordan in it but early in their careers. And okay. actually what's funny is it was like a really good movie that they they ushered up the, the director who was Josh Trank into doing Star Wars. Gotcha. And then the Fantastic Four happened and they were like, well, get this guy out of here. So yeah, he's yeah. still got a Chronicle <laughs> under his belt. But uh, but no, that's exactly it. It's like these three teenagers come across powers, or let's call it the Force, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the whole story is about how one of them, like his, you know, switch gets flipped, and he goes like, uh, it, the movie turns tragedy because he's like familiar, he can't yeah. handle the power, uh, the like um, the f- flood of uh, energy, or not? I, I'm trying to too much pressure and power. You know, it got to his head, kind of a thing. Cool. I will definitely check it out. But yeah, I, I, that's that's my uh, hope is that they go in a slightly different direction. That's not a bad way to go because, like you say, it's something they haven't done, and they yeah. can still keep it close to the idea of Star Wars. So um, yeah, good. I dig it. All right. So cool. now, do you have a, you have time for a few uh, listener questions? Uh, sure. Why not? Uh, you know, the pumpkin pie is not out of the oven yet. So yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, Lacey, let's, uh, let's take them to, uh, or, or I do this, right? I, I do this now. Okay. So geez. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had too much tryptophan today. Uh, ask Wait, the resistance. The sauce. Yeah. All right. So this is ask the resistance. Um, you send in your questions on Twitter or email and, uh, we try to do our best answering them. So let's fire them up right now. I've been wondering. What are midichlorians? Lacey, this one's going to you. Mm-hmm. This, this is from Semperfy Danny, uh, who got their handle at Semperfy Danny. And they said, I do have an Ask the Resistance question. So you sent it to the right place. Perfect. <laughs> do you think we will get a Leia series pre A New Hope on Disney Plus? And if so, who would mm. you cast as Leia and her parents, Bail and Brea Organa? Ha <laughs> ha. I so, wow, yeah. I'm gonna preface this with uh I think this could be cool, mm-hmm. but they're not gonna do this because Carrie just passed away recently. And I think that you would have a lot of people angry if they immediately were like, Oh, we're gonna make a new younger Leia because at one point she did play young Leia. That's true. Uh, yeah. so I don't see that happening and the reason that reasoning I have no one to cast because it's not going to happen. All right. But James would want Millie Bobby Brown to be cast. Yeah, yes. big time. <laughs> so. yeah. Clayton, did we tell you about that? Uh, <laughs> no, but I can I can already envision it. Yeah, James. James. So James said that it would be it's unimaginative and it's everyone keeps saying it, stop saying it, and Millie Bobby Brown like quote tweeted him and he got dragged by all the Stranger Things fans <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. When was this? That was two years ago, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, gotcha. yeah. He survived. Another, another aspect of it, too, is uh, she was being compared to Daniel Day-Lewis, and I was like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, come on. I do remember yes. that, yeah. She sent uh, she sent James to the Upside Down, but we, we pulled him out did of you actually yeah. Did you actually tag her? Or did someone else tag her? Oh. Uh, I, I yeah you know I don't remember I think I think we might have just said her name and just <laughs> someone just probably tagged her, her. Name or oh, something. Boy. That's so funny. All right, Clayton. Sorry, that's again kind of a cop out, but I can't see them recasting Leia right now. 
<laughs> uh, not that's, happening. That's fair. That's completely fair. I'm sure Semper Fi Danny would may may agree with that. Um, maybe they were <laughs> asking because they were hoping you would say that. Um, <laughs> but uh, Clayton, here we go. This, so this is from our Patreon general, Gray Beard, aka David Probus. Um, also, want to send well wishes to you. I know you had uh, your friend and your grandma weren't doing well, so. Hope everything's uh, going well. But Clayton, this one for you. Do you think we will ever learn if Luke if Luke knows about Baby Yoda, aka we call him Tiny, or interacted with him at all? Do you think we'll find out that they ever cross paths? Uh, I envision a scene where Luke um, is talking. Luke is there, maybe with uh, this young Yoda, and he's telling another character um, uh, the rules, and and he's he says, uh, you know. Don't ex- they? They hate bright light. Don't get them wet, and never <laughs> ever feed them after midnight. That's the scene that I I envision. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think. I don't think we'll see it. I don't think we'll see it. I think it would be a little too on the nose to have. You know, we kind of talked about this a little earlier. I just. I think it would be a little too on the nose to have him uh, directly involved in. Uh, uh, the Rise of Skywalker. And, and John, you make a great point that uh, it would have been sort of unfair for them to go to J.J. and, and have them uh, force him to shoehorn this character into the movie. So <laughs> you know, as cool as it might be, uh, I don't think we're going to see it in the movies. Okay. It also takes away Luke meeting Yoda on Dagobah because he seems pretty like, wait, you're the Jedi Master? And well, like it kind of takes yeah. away from that moment. It would have happened. Well, I think they're thinking Mandalorian era like between Mandalorian and Force Awakens, so he would have already mm-hmm. hung out with Oh, Yoda. I thought they yeah. were saying young Luke, like younger than when we meet Luke. Oh, hmm. That's interesting. Maybe I, I misheard I'm that. So confused I apologize. By the timeline at this we'll point. <laughs> Too many timelines. Yeah. yeah. Too many timelines. It is, yes. Um, okay. Yeah, that's fair. All right. So All right. James, this one's going to you. This one's from Mello, uh, over there in Espana. How are you, Mello? Um, what are the chances of Palpatine telling Rey the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? After all, it, it, it is a story that the Jedi would not tell her. Um, I'm I'm actually going to say no chance. Uh, I, I think this is one of those things that it's been memed so much that even if this was part of the, the suggestion, like JJ's like, uh, Dr. Eviling it here and he's like, you know, explaining the thing. He's like, we're going to connect to that scene with the, <laughs> the tragedy of, of Darth right. Plagueis and all this other stuff. I think like uh, JJ's number two, like Chris Terrios, be like, that uh, is a big no. <laughs> like, yeah. We're not going to go down that route. Yeah. Uh, so I, I just, I think uh, if they were going to go into any sort of like explanation of like the bigger picture, I think they're going to try probably to stay away to like these like winky uh, remember episode three kind of things. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, interesting. Yeah. I'm curious if he'll even be mentioned at all. Um, Plagueis, but we shall see very soon. All right, all of us quickly on this one from Carlo Wren at Carl Roberts 143. With the Skywalker story coming to a close, what elements of the previous films, like the opening crawl or the Force, need to be carried over to the f- to the new films to make it feel like Star Wars? So, if any, real quick, everyone wants to throw one thing that they feel oh. like the new movies would need to be uh, carrying over. Um, I'm going to start and say opening crawl. I think it was a big mistake that uh, Rogue One didn't have it. Solo kind of did it in an inventive way, which I liked. But Rogue One uh, threw me a bit, and I think that was a big mistake. Uh, Maybe change the font to a different color to say this isn't that saga or something. But um, So that'd be mine. Uh, Clayton? Uh, Yeah, well, I agree with you on that. I would have liked to have seen uh, The Crawl. I just think that's a very Star Wars uh, uh, trademark kind of thing. uh, I think it would be a theme. I think I think what would ca- have to carry over for me would just be a, a theme of friends sticking up for each other. Okay, I like that. That's that's <laughs> that's, it. that's simple and that's Star Wars. Um, James, what do you got? <laughs> I'm laughing because mine is so much smaller than his. I'm going to say <laughs> blasters. <laughs> blasters. Hey, I'll take a blaster. Yeah. All right. I think I'm like no matter what they try to do, whether it's like a horror story or anything like that, you got like somebody pulls a weapon and it's like, and it's like the blasters bouncing around and stuff. It's like that, that just, I think immediately goes, this is Star Wars. So. 
Yeah. I think I know what Lacey's going to say, but Lacey, what do you got? No, what do you think I'm going to say first? Lightsabers. No, I was actually going to say the Force. That's and what I would have said to you, yeah. The Force, but more than that, like the message of hope. Now, obviously, if we get Clayton's bad boy movies, they're not going to be hopeful. <laughs> right. But right. if Our, we continue yeah. on the trend of good guys, then dun, the idea dun, of Force dun, and dun, dun, believing dun, dun, in something outside dun, of yourself. Dun, dun. You good? <laughs> Yeah, I'm seeing the bad boys. I know. Um, Yeah, just being hopeful, I guess. All right. I mean, hope is the theme. Um, Mm -hmm. All right, very good. All right, uh, I'll grab this next one. Actually, you know what? Clayton, you answered the last question, which would have been by Dekine Awakens, Mark. He asked what you thought the next Star Wars film would be. We already covered that earlier. So thank you for that question, Mark. So Clayton, take this one here. Or maybe we could all answer it quickly. Sean Santarude at Rude Cold asked, after watching your Patreon poll chat about Palpatine's return, do you think he will wield a lightsaber in The Rise of Skywalker or just use force lightning? Clayton is Sheev bringing back the saber or is he just using lightning bolts? I think I think just lightning bolts. Uh, did did he ever use a lightsaber in like the animated shows or anything like that? Did he? Yes, he did. And okay. Also, he used a lightsaber in uh, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith against Yoda. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, no, I think uh, I think just I'm gonna go with just force lightning. Okay. Because I think mm-hmm. I think that was sort of the. You know, the last time, at least you know chronologically. Um, that we really remember, you know, we, the the iconic zapping <laughs> Vader, zapping Luke. I, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the lightning. All right, I, I'm with you. So I I think he looked old as a 60 year old wielding a lightsaber. So double his age, <laughs> and uh, I don't think he's gonna look too smooth with one. So I'm going lightning. Um, Lacey, where are you at? Do you think we're getting uh, another red bladed saber out of Sheev? No, I think we're getting lightning. Okay, James, can you? Follow the path. Yeah, I'm. I'm also with you guys on just using lightning because, despite the fact that in the in Clone Wars we had him using two red lightsabers and going up against Darth Maul and his brother Savage Opress, defeating both of them, jumping mm-hmm. around like a crazy old man. I don't think they're doing that <laughs> for Rise of Skywalker. They're staying far away from that. His whole thing yeah. is like, I stand here and I own you without barely moving at all. So, all right. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so four for four on Just Lightning. Sean, let us know what you thought about that. But that wraps up Ask the Resistance, which means it takes us to the end of the show. Our Thanksgiving show is over. Clayton, you survived. Um, it's time for <laughs> seconds. Yes. It's time for yes. seconds. Uh, before we do that, we just want to thank everyone for listening and watching. Uh, head to resistancebroadcast.com over at starwarsnewsnet.com to find out all your information on where you can subscribe to us. Um, of course, I do have to thank, because I missed this on Monday, and I, I apologize, but it is Thanksgiving, so I'm very thankful for our Patreon generals, and that is Carmelo, a.k.a. A Grey Jedi, who Clayton, he said, if Clayton is going to Star Wars Celebration Anaheim, I owe him a beer for being such a great friend to TRB. So that's uh, very ah, nice. <laughs> awesome. I'll be there. I'll be there. Hit me up. <laughs> All right. Um, Brian Shalito, Andrew Staley, great job on the pod race. Neil mm-hmm. Lowry, Jeremy Myers, Neil Shaw, David Probus, John Reese, JG Carr, Seth Kime, and Val Trichkoff. We salute you. Thank you so much. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> make sure you guys go to starwarsnewsnet.com every day for your star wars news reviews editorials information and more um th- that's about it subscribe enjoy your thanksgivings uh clayton sandell thank you so much for being with us today we appreciate it anytime anytime third time's uh, a charm third time's a charm <laughs> ne- next time you're on will be an even bigger show of we'll, we'll use force lightning effects uh oh. so we can do that um i'm but, writing uh, that down <laughs> We appreciate you painting your, your room and stuff like that. Where where can people uh, annoy you on Twitter and, and all that sort of stuff? Uh, yeah, on Twitter, uh, at Clayton underscore Sandell. Um, and that's, uh, that's, that's where I'm probably most active. But, of course, uh, abcnews.com. Uh, yeah. We have uh, some, some digital stuff in the works, hopefully, that will be fun that's uh, Mandalorian-related and... Uh, uh, rise of skywalker related so hopefully be able to share those soon um but Excellent. yeah and i'll be sure to tweet them out so if you follow me on twitter you'll get them 
Excellent. Cool. Excellent. Um, James, what about you? Where, okay, where can people find uh, you? Twitter and Instagram, Matt Meyer Trunks. Right on. Lazy? People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. All right. You guys can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and continually saying that Matt Smith is not going to be in the Rise of Skywalker. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Uh, once again, Clayton, thank you so much, man. Appreciate All right, guys. Thank Yay. you. You bet. <laughs> um, and, uh, enjoy your holiday weekend. Enjoy your Black Friday. Don't get killed out there and get as much of your Star Wars merch as possible. And we'll see you if you survive on Monday morning right here on the Resistance Broadcast. See you around, kids. <laughs>